Hello there, welcome to my sewing channel. My name is Anita and this is Sewing Yogi. So welcome today and welcome back if you are already a subscriber and welcome if you haven't been here before. So today I am talking about the Sew Frugal 22 um, garment that I made and I apologise as this is a little bit late. I wanted to get this out a bit earlier than what I have done but work has been a bit crazy. Last week I was working quite a lot and um, I was super tired and just, it was just crazy. So this week I've tried to squeeze it in before the Easter break. So first off, I have only made one thing, which is unusual this year because I noticed that quite a few people made quite a few garments for this So Frugal 22. I just don't know where they had the time to do it. I just did not have enough time. So um, I just made one which you know i'm happy with i'm glad i took the time that i did over this dress because i love it so in my so frugal 22 um uh, patterns that i was choosing i did choose one, this pattern as one of my choices um i did need to get swayed a few times from watching all the other vloggers and i saw quite a few patterns that i've actually really really liked and downloaded so i was a little bit tempted to, to, to get distracted but I decided to go with this one and it's the Nola dress um, from Sew Magazine and it's also called the Tea Dress. So I absolutely love this, love 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 this dress but the only problem is that the instructions are very vague so if you are a beginner sewer I would suggest maybe try a few other patterns the first, other dresses which are have a lined bodice I should say because this has a lined bodice. It is an easier way of doing a lined bodice. There are more complicated ways of doing a lined bodice, but I would suggest giving it a go a few times on other patterns before you attempt this, as the instructions are quite vague. There's no images, so all you're getting is written um, instructions, which can be quite challenging. I've, I'm a very, very visual learner, so I prefer to have all the pictures. So, you know, even so I did, I did manage it fine because I have made dresses like this before. And I also noted that there was no finished garment measurements for this. So when I did a little search of trying to find out anything I could about who anyone who'd made this dress, I found one vlogger and I can't remember, was it a vlog? No, it was a blog post, sorry. Um, I can't remember what it was now, but I will put the description a bit down below, um, a link to it, if you did want to check that out. And she had put in her blog the generalised finished garment measurements for all of the Sew Magazine patterns. So obviously it's not specifically for this pattern, um, but I think they have a general rule for all of them. So I kind of followed that. But also she mentioned that it came up quite small, this pattern. If it's going to come up small, then it's probably best to twirl. So I actually did twirl it in the end even though I really didn't want to I was really hoping that I didn't have to but I thought as it has darts it has bust darts and it has waist darts and there's also darts on the back I thought it's probably better that I twirl it so I'm so glad I did because um there were quite a few changes that I had to make to it now in a previous vlog of another dress I said about making twirls and then never working out <laughs> And um, I'm, again, I'm going to eat my words on that one because I'm so glad I did twirl this one because it did work out. I twirled the size, I think I did a size 8 on the top and I graded it to, actually let me look, just check my notes, I've got my notes here. So I'm just making it up. So yeah, I did an 8 on the top, the shoulders and the neckline, I think I've done an 8 and then I graded it to a 12 for the chest and then graded down to a 14 for the actual uh, waist just because I was a little bit wary I'm not I wasn't sure the sizing is this um, blog post uh, the lady on it was saying it came up small so I thought it's better if I go a little bit bigger than what I need to and the first thing I noticed was it was quite roomy for me so I, I have taken it in a little bit more than what um, was originally and I noted that the bust starts were in the wrong place so this bust start here was way too high so I've had to lower that so those were two adjustments I did on that first pattern um, just to make sure that I had everything 
and then I was going to look at all the other problems after. I think it's always better just to go through these gradually than try and steam through it and try and do every adjustment possible first. So my first twirl showed that I had to have a small shoulder adjustment. I needed to move the bust start down. I think the small shoulder adjustment I took in by, let me have a look, um, mm, 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 two centimetres. Yeah, so two centimetres in on the one side, so obviously it would have been four for the whole thing. And then I did my bust start, moved that upwards, no, sorry, downwards by two centimetres. So that had to be moved downwards. I made then another twirl with those adjustments and found that this weird, there was a weird shoulder thing going on. Then made the sleeve for both. And I found that this was really super tight, but then also this one was super tight. So it felt to me that there wasn't enough room in this front bit here, this shoulder point here. I've got that bone right at the front of my shoulder head there. That felt super, super tight. Now I know that I have square shoulders and so it could be that it was just this area here and obviously I'm, my um, muscles here are quite developed from uh, all the yoga practice I do. So it could be that that was the case. So what I did for that was I made a small adjustment to the sleeve head and added two centimeters just to the front sleeve head here. So I'll get the pattern pieces and I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so, so what I did with the sleeve head was I slashed right through the middle here and then I moved this top part forwards just slightly by one centimeter. So it was just going over the edge of one centimeter and then I filled in that extra part. Actually, you can see it on that's why I've done it on this side. So this is the front. So I've just moved it over and then filled it in and redrew that line all the way around. So I've actually filled that bit in as well to make it all smoothly curve around. Because the back part of the shoulder was fine, it was literally just this front part here that felt a bit tight to me. But then I did another twirl of the new shoulder adjustment with this new sleeve and it was perfect. I found that the sides were in slightly too, a little bit too big. So again, I took that in by another centimetre. So again, I took that off the pattern just by another centimetre off either side. And then I felt like I was good to go to make this version. So I think in all, I made three twirls and I have my final twirl here. So it is in like this strange um, kind of see-through fabric that you get. They come in kind of sheets, so I think they're just over a metre, square, over a square metre. So that, that's quite a decent amount you get for just a pound. Um, and I find that twirling out of this is totally fine. So I've put a zip in it and everything. And I made the one sleeve, didn't bother with the other side. I just did one sleeve on that with the new adjustment. The dust bus starts moved and the small shoulder. I did put the skirt on it as well because I just wanted to see how it would hang and how the waist looked on me. And then I felt like I could make this. Now, I wanted to make this out fabric, and if you did see the so, so Frugal video I did, of another fabric, it was a red fabric with flowers on. In the pattern um, instructions, it does say it's okay for two meters of fabric, but when I laid out my fabric, which was two meters, I was no way I was going to get the whole of the pattern out. The sleeve flounces were going to just literally not be able to be cut out from that fabric. So I've had to find this other fabric from my stash, which again, this is probably fabric that I bought probably about the same time, about three years ago, from the Birmingham rag market. And again, I didn't really know what to do with it. It's been sat there for ages and ages. Every time I looked at it, I thought, I don't really know what to make out of this. So I'm really pleased that I had this and I think I had three, no, sorry, two and a quarter meters of this. I think I must have just had what was ever left on the bolt because I would never have bought two and a quarter meters. It's a bit, random, a bit of a random amount. So I think I must have just had what was ever left. And yes, yeah, so I'm really pleased I found this. So I'll stand back and let you look at the dress fully if you haven't seen the Instagram post that I put up of the So Frugal. So yeah, I'll stand back and let you see it. So here was the dress, and I absolutely love, 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 love this. <laughs> so I so love it. It's so swishy and um, 
lovely to wear, it's really comfortable. Um, I'm just gonna tighten this belt, it's gonna look loose. Um, yeah, I really, really love the sleeves on it. I think they're so beautiful. I love the uh, little flounce on the bottom. It does remind me of the Nina Lee spring dress. Um, that's got similar sleeves to it. I love the little V-neck on the front. That's such a beautiful, pretty design. And the, um, you'll see now, that the, there's the bust start pointing directly to the apex and then the bottom does start again, does the same. I didn't have to move the bottom ones, just the side one. And black back darts, I didn't move. So it's got black darts here, didn't move those. And yeah, I've actually um, ended up lining the skirts as well for this. Now you are meant to line the inside of the flounces. I weren't sure whether you were meant to do it in the same fabric, but this fabric was very, very sheer. So I thought if I put it the same fabric underneath, you're just gonna get two of this pattern kind of showing through. So I've just used some white uh, lining fabric that I had in my stash. And that's the same in the bodice as well. And then I'll show you, I have actually lined the skirt. So I've never lined a skirt before. There you go. Um, it's again, just very light drapey lining fabric that I've put underneath there. I have done it so that it's loose, it's not attached. The only parts that it's attached by is by this back zip and then just the waist seam because I wanted it to be nice and flowing, uh, flowy and free and for it to feel like nice and cool if it's a really hot summer's day. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It has a back zip, so it has a back zip going all the way down the back, which um, I had to quickly buy couple of days before the date was due for this to be finished. I literally got this finished just the night before. So yeah, I just got this finished just the night before. I literally about seven, I think it was about 7.30 p.m. or something and I got this finished. I was desperately trying to get this finished. I didn't think I was gonna do it, but I did. Um, just purely because I had all the other um, stuff that I needed for the other color fabric. I had a zip ready, I had you know, um, everything else that I needed, the thread and everything. And then because I've had to change the fabric quickly, I needed to get a zip. I think I did have some white thread left, so I was okay for the thread. And luckily this lining that I have lined it with, which is what I was gonna line the other version with anyway, because it had white flowers on it. So I thought I'll just go with a white lining underneath that one, but it actually has worked out better for this one. So yeah, um, so I'm trying to think what other um, adjustments I did. So for the skirt, I removed three and a half centimeters off the length, because it was a little bit long. Not too long though, that's quite good for me. It's usually usually three, three inches I have to come off and not three and a half centimeters. Um, and then, um, yeah, so the I've extended this arm side by just a centimeter. And then I had to extend the arm, um, arm, sorry, that was the sleeve head I've extended by a centimeter. And then I've had to extend this arm side by half a centimeter. So when you've got both sides of the bodice, so I did half a centimeter on the front bodice and the back bodice, so that made the centimeter I needed. I think it worked out okay. I wasn't sure, I did have a few moments of scratching my head of that bit, but you do have to extend this arm, the arm side if you make any adjustments to your sleeve head. So that's what I did for that. Um, I think that's about it. So I did actually do quite a few adjustments for this to make it fit me, but it was worth the time. And you know, I think sometimes with these kind of style bodices, it's a lot easier. I found this much, much easier than the other dress that I made, which had a raglan sleeve. I just could not fathom them that one. I couldn't fathom them that out at all. So this was much easier for me to do. I think it fits me nicely. It probably could be a little bit tighter around this area here. It's still quite a little bit baggy, but from my um, experience with, when you're working with viscose, and this is a viscose fabric, by the way, if I haven't said that already, when you're working with it, you're kind of pressing it quite a lot. It does tend to sort of stretch it out a little bit, I found, and then as soon as you wash it, it does shrink, because I know I've had quite a few garments where I've I've overfitted them to a degree because they have sort of stretched out. And then when I wash them, they don't fit me anymore. They just shrink back in again. So I'm gonna leave this as it is. And when I wash it, I'm assuming that this will sort of cinch itself back in a little bit. 
which then will make it perfect. So yeah, that's what I did. And I mean, with the skirt, the lining, all I've done is literally cut out the skirt pieces again. When it came to attaching the skirt to the bodice, I first attached the lining and the main fabric together, basted them around the top. Then I put that onto the bodice. And then I hemmed the um, main fabric separately from the lining fabric. The only tricky bit I found when, when it got to the zip. So it tells you to overlock the back centre seams. And then when you put your zip in, you do your usual, put your visible zip in, and then you have to stitch down from the bottom up to the zip. Now I couldn't do that because um, I've got this two lining and main fabric. So what I had to do was I stitched down to a point. So I've gone from the zip down and then I stopped about, let me have a look. I think it was probably about, yeah, it's about two inches from the bottom. And then what I've done is I have separated them out. So I have kind of overlocked the edge of the lining and the main fabric separately. Then I've turned this, this up separately. And then with this, I've made it slightly shorter. So it just kind of fits inside snugly into that um, seam allowance. And then I've hemmed that again separately. So the only bit that it's attached is from this point here up to the zip and then around the waist. And then the rest of it is loose. I literally made that up as I went along. I had no idea what I was doing. I've never done, I've never lined a skirt before, so I just kind of made it up, but it's worked. So, you know, I'm really, really chuffed, I'm really pleased that it's managed, I've managed to do that. So, yeah, um, I'm trying to think, are there anything else about this that I've done? Apart from that, the fact I absolutely adore it, and I'm going to make another one for sure. Now I've got the pattern, and I've um, got it to my size, I'm definitely, definitely going to make another. I've had so many lovely comments about this dress. Um, on Instagram and from my friends. Beautiful, pretty, floral, summery dress that you could wear to maybe a wedding or um, a lovely cocktail party or um, a garden party or something really special like that. But I mean, for me, I'm just literally gonna wear it in the house. <laughs> just gonna, I'm just gonna flounce around the house in it just for a bit of fun. Um, obviously not at the moment because it is freezing still here. Um, but when the weather warms up a bit, I'm definitely going to wear this. So also adding to this is that I actually won a prize. <laughs> so, you know, lo and behold, I've actually won <laughs> for the first time in my whole life. I've actually won something which is just like crazy. I just couldn't believe it. When I first read the, um, the post that, um, uh, Sam had put up, and Ruan had put the same post up. I kind of had to look at it for a bit and was like, what does this mean? I don't really understand what's, what's going on. Have I, have I won something? No, I couldn't possibly have won something. Must be a mistake. I mean, I think it took me about five minutes for it to actually sink in that I'd won something and I actually did message Sam and say, have I won something? Have I won a magazine? <laughs> so yeah, she said, yes, you've won something. So it arrived yesterday. I am so, so pleased with this gift this prize. I mean, it's like a gift to me. I just, this is like the most amazing thing that's ever happened. <laughs> so I shall show you the gift or the prize that I won. It's the magazine. I don't know how to say this. Is it Torco magazine or yeah, Torco or Taco magazine? I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that, but I have never seen this magazine. Um, having said that, it does look familiar. So I may have actually glanced at it in the shop and saw the price of it and then probably thought oh, that's never going to happen. Um, it's an absolutely lovely magazine. Now, to call it a magazine is kind of, I think, is a little sort of making it seem not as special as what it is because it's actually more like a book. Um, but I assume they're calling it a magazine because it does come out in issues. Now, this is number three, issue number three for summer 2022. I'm not sure how often they re release these, but there were five of them. So four other people out there have got a magazine like this and, um, you know, I hope that they are loving it just as much as I am. So, yeah, it's basically um, a magazine full of wonderful, wonderful patterns. 
and you know it's just beautiful I mean the smell of it I just love the smell of magazines I don't know what it's about it's the it's the kind of um smell that you get from um books that are kind of like when I was at art college and you probably don't know this about me but I do have a degree in fine art so I went to art college and then did my degree in fine art and I used to go and spend time in the library and just go through all the um, amazing art books. Um, there's some beautiful, beautiful books that are all based on specific artists. And I just used to sit there looking at them, smelling them. <laughs> there's, some, there's something about the smell. There's just something amazing about books and the way they smell. So, yeah, um, that's what it reminds me of anyway, going through those those big those big, what do they call them? Those big books that you can get for like coffee tables that people have in their coffee table, posh people have in their coffee, coffee tables. Um, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful books that I'd sit there and look through and, and think, you know, one day, one day I'll be an amazing artist. I'll, you know, it never, it never happened <laughs> for one reason or another. But yeah, this magazine is fabulous. So it's got lots of uh, different patterns in here. I'm trying to think how much, how many patterns are there that they give you. There's quite a few different patterns. Um, there's a lot that I think I will probably make. Now there's some kind of almost like the collot trousers that are in here that are beautiful. Like they're really like gathered and floaty. I just think that's lovely. I'll just find a picture of someone in them because that's the actual pattern at the back. So let's find the picture of someone that's in them. But yeah, really, really loving these. Here we go. They just look so fancy. I don't think for one minute they'll probably suit me. I'm too short, but you know what? I think I might try them anyway. And there's another pattern that I really, really liked in here. Where is it? Oh, this one's really lovely. Oh, I think this is dreamy. I have actually got a dress that's very similar to this. Um, and I really, really love it. So it's kind of like a okay, cold shoulder, floaty dress with beautiful long sleeves. There you go. And so there's another picture there. It's got lovely, long, floaty sleeves. I just think that's so beautiful. So I'm really tempted by that one as well. Oh, and there's an, another pattern here, which is really interesting. I don't know if you can see the full picture of it. There's not anything that's like full picture. I don't know. Now there's one here. It's kind of like a sort of, I don't know what you would call it. It's got, it's kind of like a play suit. So it's like shorts, but you can also have it in long version, like a long trouser version. But the front of it has got really pretty details. It's kind of like, um, are they called knife pleats down the front? Um, I think that's really interesting. Let's find the line drawing of it. I'm just gonna just show you all my patterns. All the patterns I'm gonna make. Let's have a look. I'm just so excited. In fact, I could, in fact, I could put just won something. It's just amazing. I couldn't believe that I've actually won something. First time ever in my whole life. So there you go. There's the line drawing. It's kind of like got knife pleats down the front. And then like it's lovely. You can either have a trouser or pant version or just the little shorts. Kind of play, play suit version. It's really, really creepy. It's really, really strange at the back here. So it just kind of goes round at the neck. I'm assuming that she's got a top on underneath that, so you'd have to wear something underneath it. And there you go, there's like the whole of the back is open. I just thought that was really, really interesting. I really, really like that. There's also a cute blouse in here that I thought I might make as well. Um, let's have a look, there we go. There's a couple of versions you can make. So you've got one there with the little sort of rounded collar. And then you've got another version where you've got like frills around the neckline and then the shoulder. Now, uh, you know what I'm like for my frills. I probably won't make that one. I'll make the other version without the frills. But, oh, there's the one with the frills. I think on someone else that would look lovely, but on not on me, I just don't, I don't think I could get away with that one. But yeah, it's really beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous magazine. I'm just absolutely... Over the moon, absolutely over the moon that I've won that. I just think it's amazing. I'll probably keep that forever, forever and ever and ever. So yeah, that's it for me today. That's all I've got to talk about. I don't think there's anything else I've got to tell you about with this dress. Um, 
yeah, I'd definitely recommend making it if you wanted to have a go at it. Just check your sizing, do a twirl, make sure you um, do your muslin version, I'd say. Check the darts first. For me, I always check the neckline, just, you know, quite large. But I do did I did read on that blog post that I saw that the girl had said um, that it was quite large across the shoulders for her as well. So it could be that it's just... Um, you know, one that may you you may not have, have ever had to do that adjustment before, but you may need to do it on this one. Um, and I really love it. So I hope you enjoyed that today. Sorry if I've rambled too much and um, I just rambled nonsense about Moon Prize, but I'm really, really happy. And thank you to everybody who has either commented or liked or subscribed to my channel from that So Frugal blog and, you know, all the wonderful comments I had. It's been so lovely. And also thank you to Rowan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl, Sam from Frugally Smurt for putting, for putting this together. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, I'm astounded and, you know, it's just it's crazy the amount of work they've put into this. And it makes my head spin to think all the work that they've had to do as well after putting everything together, getting the prizes for everybody. Yeah, it's just been amazing. So yeah, thank you so much for watching today. And if you have likes, then please do like. Um, click the thumbs up and if you subscribed then thank you and if you haven't then please do subscribe and I'll sh to put more content up about all the things that I'm going to be making this summer and yeah I hope you get loads of sewing done thank you and I'll as always send you all so much love take care bye